Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how we can hack a light bulb. Here's the light bulb and it's a controllable light bulb where you can change its colour, brightness and various different effects such as disco, party mode, fire effect and such like. And I'm going to do this using a Raspberry Pi. First, look at the light bulb. This is a um, dial light bulb. Uh, so it's available on the brand dial, which is a European brand available throughout the Europe and the UK, particularly it's uh, B&Q and Screwfix, which are the uh, owned by the same company that owns the brand. And um, it comes with this remote control, which is infrared. So it's an infrared remote control. As you can see from the, the blacked out portion, that's where the infrared light goes out. And so what we're going to do is basically look at the signals coming from the remote control capture those and then play them back on a Raspberry Pi. So here's the circuit which is mounted on top of a Raspberry Pi. Uh, it, this particular one's on a Raspberry Pi 4 and I've got it connected to a next dock to give me a screen and keyboard. But this could be on any Raspberry Pi and you don't even need a screen and keyboard. Uh, connected. You can use this headless, you can connect to it remotely and, and run all the commands uh, from over the command line or indeed use some other third party tools to access it, either a web page or um, even you could tie this into uh, your voice activated device such as uh, Google Home or Alexa. So show you the circuit now So as you can see, here's the circuit diagram. It's, it's basically built up of two separate circuits, um, but all mounted on, on the one Raspberry Pi. So you can build these separately. The receiver part uses an infrared receiver, and that is only used for uh, capturing the devout codes from the remote control. And once you've captured those, you don't need that part of the circuit. But you can leave it in any way if you if you want to build this as a, a multifunction device. The transmitter part, um, arguably the most important part, because this is what sends the signals to the light, or indeed any other infrared um, controlled device. Uh, again, a very basic circuit, and it just uh, takes the signal from the Raspberry Pi. Uh, increases the gain a little and uses an infrared sender to send that signal. Back to the Raspberry Pi board, here we can show um, this is soldered onto a uh, Raspberry Pi Perma Proto Pi Hut, which is uh, basically a, high, a board that sits on top of the Raspberry Pi that you can solder direct to. Um, there's both parts of the circuit uh, created on here. Here's the receiving part and this is the infrared receiver. And then there's um, the MOSFET there and goes to this um, infrared emitter. So I've just put this on a, a bit of a longer wire. These are just a couple of jumper light wires um, connected together which gives me a bit more range or a bit more flexibility where I can position uh, the Raspberry Pi in relation to the device I'm wanting to control. Now if you don't want to do soldering there's a couple of other options. Uh, the circuit can easily be built on a breadboard. Uh, there's only a few components and you can just wire them from the Raspberry Pi onto a breadboard and it will work that way. 
or you can buy commercial devices such as this one so this is a board from Energini which is uh, known for its uh, plug-in controllers and home automation and this is a, a particular board they did for um, communicating with infrared uh, devices they had an infrared plug-in uh, plug and let's see this the circuits very similar um, but using service mount components and that's quite a nice small little board fit on any Raspberry Pi and it uses the same pin numbers as I've used on my circuit. This uses uh, GPIOD. Um, uh, on an earlier version I used LIRC which is the Linux infrared control daemon and I had uh, decided it was it was too complicated you had to go through too many steps to set it up and for this I found out that GPIOD uh, made it much much simpler to, to do. Um, in the case of the infrared part of GPIOD it um, captures the code and creates a hash code that basically records what it centered, censored on its um, receiver. It doesn't try and work out the protocols and things like that which LIRC does but it's, once it's captured those you can retransmit them. You can do all that from the command line or in my case I've um, used a bit of Python which I'll, I'll explain in a minute. First thing is to program the device and um, literally you there's, there's a command line command which I'll show on the screen you run that and then you go in programming mode and you have to press each of the buttons in turn that you wanted to program and you press them twice the first one is the first capture and the second one is to make sure it captures the same button to make sure that it got the whole signal and you just go through each button in turn that you want to capture and that saves all those into a file. So once you've captured that, there is then a um, command line program you can run and you can replay some of these commands and that will change it. But really what I wanted to demonstrate here is how you can control this using Python. It has a, a sample code from, available from the GPIOD uh, website which can control a device but it's not provided as a Python module which is what ideally you'd want and so it's quite difficult to use. So what I've done I've taken that code and just looked at the sender part, extracted that and created my own sort of pseudo module. It's, um, it's a module but it's not polished as much as um, a create if I was, I was creating this as a, uh, a more professional module but it's enough to to be able to run a uh, simple command. So here's a short little program that I've created. It allows you to pull, put in multiple codes at a time and then you can send those to um, the light. So here's the light and so this sample bit of code is just to set it to the flame mode. If we run that, you see it's changed uh, to a mode where it's a, a flickering red light as though it's a candle type flame. You could of course change this to run something different. If I just change it to a color, say green, Send that signal and it changes it to green. So that's it in terms of this one particular light. There is one uh, slight drawback um, on this light in that the on button also is the off button. What that means is that you need to know the state of the light 
before you can turn it on or off appropriately. So just a little something to be aware of, it's not really a showstopper but um, it isn't brilliant. Now there's various other lights that use a very similar technique and use infrared remote controls. And here's um, one, this, this is the remote control for it, I'm going to show it you in a minute. This is for a spotlight bulb that's designed to go into a, uh, a GU10 spotlight holder. And you can see from the brand on it, this one is, um, I'm not sure whether you can see on the screen, but it's, it's Crystallite, uh, which is um, fairly well known, I think. I've also got this one, and this one's called a Magic Lighting uh, Control. So this one is for a outdoor light, um, similar to like you, um, floodlight, so like a, a mini LED floodlight. And this one and this one happen to be exactly the same in terms of the remote control except for the, the branding that's on the control. Um, so they're, they're, they're basically I then come off the same production line but with a, a different labelling. And the advantage of these is they do have a separate on and off button. So if you want to control one of these, for instance, if you want to turn it on and set it to a certain colour, then send the on command and then set the colour and it will always work. Whether it's off or on, if it's already on it ignores the on, if it's off then it'll turn it on and then run the command. So that's quite a useful feature of those. So really the, the reason for this is, well what can you do with it now? And, and really it's, it's up to your imagination. So. Now you know you can control a light, you can have it turn on automatically when the door opens using a contact sensor. You could make it available through a web page and create your own mini web server, perhaps using Python. And uh, I've got details of other projects that use the similar technique. And that way you can connect remotely as long as you port forward through your router or just from your Wi-Fi in your home if you don't do that. And that also leads to other things you can use if then then that, which is a, uh, a home automation technique, or you could tie it into Google Home or Alexa and have it voice control your lights. So really the, the possibilities are endless and um, this is the means to be able to make those possible. So I hope that's you found that useful and maybe giving you some ideas and um, you'd like to do some other things. So um, the details of, of this and the circuits and things like that is all on my website, uh, penguinduty.com. And uh, I'd love to hear from anyone that, that creates something that, that uses this in their project. Uh, you can get me through the usual uh, social media or leave a comment on this video. If you found this useful please like and share it and if you subscribe to my channel you'll find out about my latest videos. I'm uh, often putting videos about Raspberry Pi projects and uh, electronics or programming.